सूरज पवित्र श्रावणी सब में जान सब ना यूनिवर्सल वे इट इज अवर्सल वे I take that point also. See, it is something like making our program statements more readable. Standardized. Hmm. More readable, we say usually. Okay. So, uh, polymorphism is nothing but a uh, one object or an one entity which behaves in many different forms, which can take many different forms. Example is function overloading and operator overloading. so function overloading where we are using the same function with different arguments or function with different function with the same name but with different signature we use that word signature is nothing but that prototype or the declaration our operator overloading is one more best example for compile type polymorphism where we give a new definition for the operators so that we can use the operator exactly like how we were using it for predefined data type like that we use it for our user defined data type also that's all okay operators will have already the predefined definition so that they will work directly with the predefined data type so to make them work with the user defined data type we need to overload them so that in our program statements becomes more readable So that's all what we have learnt in our uh, operator overloading and function overloading, which is clubbed together is called as what compile time polymorphism or static polymorphism because this is something like during the compile time only everything is decided and done. Now today we are going to talk about run time polymorphism, something which happens during the run time or execution time. something which happens during the run time means we need to locate the memory during the run time and we have to do that operation that means we have to introduce pointers today well we know already what is pointer why we use pointer and as well as the dynamic memory allocation which happens during the run time or dynamic time or execution time of course we should understand before i explain you what is dynamic polymorphism let us understand one class for which today we will not create the object instead we will create a pointer and we'll allocate the memory and we'll do some operation then we'll deallocate the memory then we'll understand dynamic polymorphism because dynamic polymorphism means it needs pointer to a class not object to a class got If you understand this, dynamic polymorphism becomes very simple concept again. So let us do this one first. What we are going to do? Will not we we will not create a object. All these days, what we did? We created a class. Let's say if it is employee class or any class for which what we did in the main function, we directly created the object like employee obj one. We created. Today, instead of this, first we'll try to understand how to create an object. Sorry, how to create a pointer. Then, how do we allocate the memory? How do we use this one to use this to uh, access the data members of the class? Any idea? What I should do if I have a pointer to a class? What I should have? Is the memory got created? If we create a pointer. Hey, this is similar to your pointer to a structure concept. Don't tell me we don't know. Pointer to a structure, everybody knows, right? Which operator we use it? Pointer to a structure means which object? Which which operator we use it? Arrow. Hmm. Very good. Arrow operator. We cannot use now dot if it is a pointer. And before we use that one, first what we should do? We should allocate the memory, na? We have to allocate the memory, right? ha huh? because pointer means memory will not be allocated for example here in this case what i should do i have to have a object first employee obj1 and i take a pointer now i can say what ptr is equal to address of obj1 do you guys remember this we were doing it in structure concept but whenever we have a pointer we are not supposed to take any object again take the pointer 
allocate the memory for the pointer uh, allocate the memory using pointer use it then destroy it understood this is what we have to do today then we'll move on to dynamic polymorphism hope you are understanding this understood this yes ma'am tell me yes yeah so first what we will do we'll just because see you know in our all these days when we were when we learned this uh, c++ we did not create any pointer to a class correct huh? we just used the object only all, all the time we just created the object only we did not create a, uh, we did not create a pointer only correct huh? the same shall open the dcc then we we'll just write the program for it yeah can you see the notepad what i hope but pointer to a class will do first you know why i i started with this topic is just to first you have to first understand how to use a point how to create a point because definitely will not use mlock clock and all here correct huh? what we use here new and delete so let us understand one program for pointer to a class how to use a uh, how to use new to allocate memory then how do we destroy the memory for the object etc then we'll move on to the next part let's just take it as abc okay ma'am pointer to a class or the object tell me point how can it be a pointer to the class class is the build blueprint correct ha huh. Ah, what is your question? The class is the blueprint you said. Ah, correct. Yeah. So, ah. What will you do with having a pointer to the blueprint? Ah, see. Okay. See over here. There is a class for which we used to create an object. As soon as you create an object, memory will be created. Correct, sir? Yes, madam. Created for the object by referring that blueprint. Object used to be created. If it is having A and B, A and B will be created. Correct, sir? Yes, madam. Now I am not creating an object, but instead I'll create a pointer. When I create a pointer. What pointer can do? Pointer class type can hold the address. Address of type what? Employee. Object. Ah, so I don't have the object only now. I don't have created the memory only. So what I will do is I will use dynamic memory allocation concept. I'll allocate the memory and I'll create this memory and let this pointer hold the address of this. This is as simple as what we have done in structures. Pointer to a structure we have done, na? I don't want to make it static. See the object which we were creating here. Are we able to destroy it? No. Assume hundreds of objects are created, and in when the program proceeds further, I'm not able to destroy them until unless I close my program. Now the advantage of allocating a memory using pointer is. Whenever you want to allocate, you allocate. Whenever you don't want, you destroy it. Now using new and delete. Understood, Ganesh. Madam, so physical memory will be get allocated. Memory we are allocating by ourselves during the runtime. That is as good as object. Get allocated and it was like static. We cannot modify. We, it's not like modification here. We we. Don't want that mean that object means we we were not able to destroy that object. But here now we can able to destroy it at any point when we say we don't need it. Understanding this one? So first we'll do it without the constructor. Then we'll do it with the constructor. Okay, na? Put underscore a. During the time we assign the pointer, does that get a memory allocated? Come again. 
soon we assign a pointer we get a memory allocation we should allocate it when we create a pointer memory will not be there we have to use new and we have to allocate it let me show you just a minute wait i'll just show you wait huh yes madam okay. so you know this is as usual i am i'm purposely i'm avoiding constructor because constructor is a new concept once again to be discussed so i'll just i'll just take normal member function one for initializing and one for displaying okay now but now what i will do here if i create an object definitely memory will be created object is there with a b is there no i will not create an object today i will create a pointer it means there's no memory allocation happened we have to allocate the memory now how do we allocate the memory equals to new no new new is a keyword which is an operator which is used for allocating a memory now new what is the data type i want to allocate a b c only correct ah huh? understood ah huh? but the structure was having packing and other thing is this having the same thing oh that padding packing you are asking yes madam need to check it here madam no, remember i'm trying to remember the one keyword we used to use over there hmm. not able to recollect the keyword that used over there in padding packing padding, padding you are asking yes madam Um, hash pragma. Yes, one hash pragma. Hmm. Okay, let this work. Then I'll explain you. Okay, na. Hope you have understood what I did, right? Just I'm allocating the memory, and I'm I'm using pointer pointer, na. So arrow operator I'm using, and uh, invoking the functions, then deleting. This is not possible if you create the object. <clears throat> okay, let me just show you first ones. Then we I'll I'll explain you this. What is this working? Working double. Okay, that's okay. I'll tell you why that. See, uh, oh, too fast. What is that? Two which is taking? Any mistake I have done while typing? What is the mistake I have done? Hmm. Which is the float now? Nah? Only the integer and only float. So that warning was coming. Okay, now nah? this is working. Ah. Huh? 
how do we prove that this is dynamically allocated memory is the center here have done delete ptr now after this if i use ptr will it work for me will this work is it working is it working see is it coming is it is it giving you the exact result no na see zero it is coming here because after deleting you are trying to access that memory it may generate segmentation fault also because it is getting that memory is not clearly refreshed so it is giving you some garbage output like zero and 2.5 like that you can execute it once again yeah zero only is coming understood this Hey guys, you understood this now? Yes, ma'am. All sleeping. Delete, 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 delete. PTR means pointed to that object. Pointer is deleted, or else that object is object is deleted. Where is the object here, Ishwar? It is the memory what we created for A and B. A B C. Ah, for A and B we created. PTR is memory. pointed to an object. Uh, pointed to a class. See, it it will refer the class is like our blueprint. PTR will refer that blueprint and whatever the members are there for that memory will be created. And that memory what is created using you is been deleted now. If you say delete, understood? Okay. Yes, everybody. Hey, this is same as pointer to a structure what we have done in our C language. And uh, the app dynamic memory allocation for structure what we have done same program. Only thing is uh, simplified way because new and delete we are using. M malloc means M malloc of size of n in int into n something then type casting so many things we are doing. It is simple here. Is it clear now? If you have understood this, then only I can explain you dynamic polymorphism. Tell me clearly whether you have understood or not now. Pointer to S class is clear. Yes, ma'am. Suraj. Ah. Uh, yes. Okay. Selva. Bhanu. Yes, ma'am. Pravani, Pavitra, Ishwar. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, now. Now understand the concept of dynamic polymorphism. Okay, understand very clearly. Understand this. Sir. What is the example for dynamic polymorphism? What is the example for static polymorphism? What is the example for dynamic polymorphism? Static polymorphism operator overloading, function overloading, and dynamic function polymorphism. Overloading, function overloading, operator overloading means static polymorphism. Static. Polymorphism example: virtual functions and abstract class. Correct, now. So, what is this dynamic polymorphism? We'll just try to understand now. I have the PPT. I'll be explaining you through PPT one more time the theory part. Just understand this now. Which inheritance is this? Which inheritance is this? Multiple. Avita, multiple. One base class with no more derived classes. Hey, come on, this is free hierarchy. Hierarchy. Ulta mirror image of this is your multiple, na? Two base class with one derived is multiple. This is hierarchy polymorphism. Correct, huh? A hierarchy inheritance. Yes. yes. Everybody. Yes. I'll create a base class, and I'll create a derived one. You guys remember I have done this one. Derived two. 
then I would say. And next, so who, which class I should create the object now after the inheritance? If we are talking about inheritance, so which class I have to create the object to access the data? Hmm. If I create the object D1, tell me what I can access. What I can access if I create the object for this one? Derived one class means object one. That means I can access only base class with the derived one class. Correct? Huh? I cannot access derived two and derived three. Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. Hey, what happened today? No one talking. Not had lunch, huh? Huh? Now, if I create the object for this class, I can access these two. Correct? Huh? If I create the object here, object D3, I can access the data from base class with the D3 class. Correct? Huh? Using object 1, I cannot access the data from D2 class or D3 class. Or using object 2 class, I cannot access these two data. Object 3, I cannot access these two. We know that, correct, Agha? This is what is your hierarchy inheritance. Correct, huh? Why I suddenly started talking about hierarchy inheritance? Let me tell you. I'll take an example now. Assume there is a project manager. And a project manager, Pavitra is working. Ravani is working. Suraj is working. Okay, now. Now, what is the job of project manager? This project manager will call Pavitra. He will assign some task to her. Do the work. Project manager is one class. This is like base class. Project manager is base class. What is the job of project manager? He'll be having the data. He will say, I have the data here in my class. Pavitra, you inherit it. Use it. Do this operation. The task is given to Pavitra. Correct? Huh? Now what Pavitra has to do? Pavitra has to create an object for her class so that she can, she can access the data which is from inherited from the project manager, that is base class. Use her own data. Do the work. What Pavitra will do. Next comes to Shravani. Same thing. Shravani has to create the object for the uh, object for her class and inherit the data from the project manager class. Add some more extra data from the Shravani class. Do the task. Same thing with Suraj. Correct or not? Everyone understood that much? Yes. Now Pavitra has completed her work. Shravani completed. Suraj also completed. Project manager has to verify now. Project manager has to verify now. What project manager has to do? Will he create the object for his class? Suppose if they create the object for the project manager, which is nothing but base class. Try to understand here. By creating the object for the derived class, you can inherit the data from the base class, add extra features and do the operation. Suppose if you do ulta, that means now you're creating an object for the base class. Can you access the data from the Pavitra class? That means from the derived class? Ulta of inheritance, I'm asking. Is it possible? Wait, ma'am. You mean to say, well, after creating hmm. class for Pavitra, we can't access project manager? Project manager is a base class. Base class. And three are the derived class. Pavitra is a derived class. Now Pavitra has created the object for her class and she can access the data from the project manager class. She can add her own data and she can do the operation. Correct? Yes, ma'am. That means by creating the object for the derived class, we were doing it. Now what I am doing is, what I am telling is, I will create the object for the base class. I am creating an object for the base class. By creating an object for the base class, 
Definitely, I can access the data from the base class. Can I access yes, the data from the derived class using the object of the base class? Not just study. No, ma'am. No, in general, no. you can. No. Uh, Ganesh, see, usually inheritance in biology, we say we learn as what kids will inherit the features of parents. Correct or not? No, it is ultra like saying kids. From kids. Parents and parents look like grandparents. Now you said you want to make grandparents. What? Now you mean to say is you want to make grandparents? No, 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 no. Assume. Uh, what uh, what features usually we inherit? What features usually we inherit from parents to the children? In general, maybe suppose if father is a left hander. The kid may become left-handed. Do you know that inheritance it is? No, no, don't know, madam. I think it should not be necessary. It depends it on. Be, but it may be also. Chances are there. Chances okay. are. Okay. I'm taking left-hander as an example. Maybe skin color, hair color, um, eye color. Do you know that it will be inherited from parents? Ah, uh, from parents to the children. Correct or not? Yes, madam. Ah, uh, now I'm asking Ulta. Any features will the will the parent get inherited from their children? Never, na? Yes, nowadays it's like children are t educating parents as well. Are not that way. No, no, genes will not get older. Ah, correct or not? Education wise, it is possible, but other way it is not possible. So only I'm taking the hair, hair color, skin color, eye color example. <laughs> I am not talking about the education wise or property wise and all. Maybe kids can buy a home for a parents nowadays. Earlier it was only parents used to give the property for the kids. Now it is becoming ulta also. Correct or not? So you people try to understand. Whenever we do the inheritance, by creating the object for the derived class, we access the data from the base class also. We access the data of the derived class also. But after the inheritance, if you create the object for the base class, you cannot access the data from the derived class. Clear to you guys? But madam, it was restricted to create object from the parent class. So if you create, no, no, it is not restricted. You can create, but is it useful? Anyhow, you create the object means everything from base class you can access here only means why do you want to create again object for the base class? Yes, madam, not necessary. So when we have advanced class, why do I need to use the base class? Advanced class is giving me both the top options. Able to access two inheritance in the derived class means why do you want to create the object for the base class? So we never create. It is not that you cannot create. It can you can create, but we won't create. It is not. It is of no use. Guys, understand. After the inheritance, usually. We create the object for the derived class through derived class object only. We access all the data of the base class also. Correct or not? So we yes, don't the object for the base class. Is it clear? Is so it clear? creating an object for derived class is as good as creating object for base class. It has all the data which is present in the base class. Hmm. So. Creating an object for the base class after inheritance is of no use because meaningless. The base class object you cannot access the data of the derived class. Is that point is clear to you guys? Yes, man. Like version was old versions is now useful, but like new version is more useful and has a lot many properties. Ah, yeah. That that's okay. That's what now we are trying to do. That now. Wait. I'll tell you. I'll come to that. By default, by creating an object. The base class, and I will not say like this. Sir. You, um, how do I say that? Base class object cannot access the members of the derived class. You guys clear with that point? You guys clear with this one? In inheritance, I'm talking about. 
whereas the right class object can access the data from the base class object is it clear to you everybody have you understood this point yes ma'am this point is clear what i wrote here is it clear this point okay now see project manager has assigned the project to pavitra assigned the project to shravani assigned the project to suraj what pavitra shravani and suraj did they they created their own object object for their classes and they access the data from the project manager they have inherited done the work inherited done the work inherited done the work now project manager has to verify whether pavitra has done the project properly or not suraj has done the proper uh, properly properly the project or not or shravani he has to verify now if he create the object for his class no use because he cannot ulta of inheritance i told you it is not possible and as a project manager you know he will not come to pavitra's cabin to check her project yes or no see suppose assume this is like ceo and an employee ceo will come to employee's cabin or employee has to go to ceo's cabin usually we go there right the employee will go to the cabin right same thing here now the problem is now this base class sitting here only wants to see what pavitra has done after that this base class wants to see what this ravani has done base class wants to see what suraj has done so you know what we do we create a pointer for the base class we create pointer for the base class just now pointer to class i have discussed now the same pointer pointer we are going to create for the class to which class we are creating the pointer to the base class over now when we create when we are doing this job we are telling the uh, see what project manager will do is he will say pavitra you do so and so work but when you are showing me the output compulsory in your class this is one class na derived class in your class to display the result you should have one function let's say display even same thing he will tell to shravani also shravani do so and so work when your work is completed you should give me the output it which should be displayed inside one function called as display same thing for suraj also that means this base class had made compulsory a rule that whenever the work is completed by these derived classes all three classes all three derived classes must keep one common function display 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 as an example i am taking and that display function he will keep here you should have one function like this only this format only you should follow like that he we have we have to say format done now he will create the pointer for the base class project manager or we are going to create a pointer for the base class now we want to verify what pavitra has done pavitra must have created an object na so i'll take that object i'll assign that object address to the pointer what is i have, what i have created for the base class and i'll execute it so that this display function will come here and get executed so that i can see what pavitra has done now pavitra's verification is over now shravani i'll she has created an object i'll take that object i'll use the same pointer i'll assign this address this object address there i'll say display now so it will get executed that means i'm verifying what shravani has done similar way for suraj also he must have created an object now that object i'll assign it to the pointer and get it that means i am i am a base class creating a pointer for the base class and i am selecting which object to be hold which object should be pointed by our pointer and execute dynamically i am choosing is it i want pavitra's output i want to see is it shravani's output i want to see is it suraj's output deciding myself during the run time and it is called as dynamic polymorphism we'll see with the program to understand in a better way Yes, ma'am. At least one idea you got. Yes, ma'am. Iva ga ulta of this. See, base class and derived classes were there. We were creating the object for the derived class, accessing the data and executing. From the down side, we were executing. 
now we are up, we are at the top level here some people are there we are here we want to see what these people are doing we don't want to go there they should come here so what i will do is i'll create a pointer here take the object of their class assign here whoever the object i was in that i am executing this person's over the second person's object i'll assign to the same pointer execute second next person next person. so dynamically we are selecting which which class which object i want to use and which function i want i want to execute i'm just doing that work but the idea and this is applicable always only with the hierarchy inheritance not for usually we won't use it for any other inheritances it can be applicable but dynamic polymorphism is with respect to base class with respect to base class and creating a pointer to the base class where is virtual function here is the question let's see that in the program hope this is clear this is clear yes madam is there only base class and object in c++ come again only class and object are there in c++ you think class and object concept only so many things we have done na yes madam the class and object seems the base for this ha uh ha -huh. so only one without, implementation plus class. class and object we are not able to do anything Unlike C, printf and scanf, here is class and object. Hmm. But madam, till today I didn't able to understand what is the application of what C plus plus. Hmm. 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 Hm
if I create the object for the derived one class and if I call the display function, what is the output? Is class display function and derived class display function. Both it will show you if Wait, ma'am. One, one, one second, tell ma'am. If you display class of, I have one base class, two derived class. Correct, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. In base class also, I have a function called as display. Same exact matching function. Just observe here. Void display. Same void display is here also. Now I'll create the object for the derived one class. I am creating the object for the derived one class. And object one dot arrow, uh, sorry, object one dot display. If I do what, which display function you will execute? Function overriding. Function overriding. Correct, huh? Everybody knows that, right? If the base class and the function, uh, if the base class and the derived class have the function with the same name, derived class function will override the base class function, and this concept is called as function overriding. We have done already. Correct or not? Yes, ma'am. Hmm. Now it is Ulta. I will not create the object for the derived class. What I will create now? I will create a pointer for the base class now. Are you guys understanding? I am going to create what is my base class name? Base star PTR. I hmm. will say BPTR. Let it be to highlight base class pointer. Okay, now. If I run this program, what is the output I'm going to get now? Tell me. What's the output I'm going to get now if I execute it? What? Nothing now. Because pointer created, no function called, no memory allocated, nothing happened. What happens? Nothing. No error, no output. Correct or not? Once we'll execute and see. Because nothing we have, are we, are we calling any functions there? No, no. So now come back. What I should do now here now tell me. I should, I have a point that means I should allocate the memory. No, no. Allocate the memory. No, no. How to allocate the memory? Okay. Now memory is allocated. That means. Now, see if without before allocating the memory, can you call the display function? No, no, segmentation fault will happen. So, new, I can well, put comment now. What I should do base arrow display. We'll see whether output comes or not. I have not done deletion, deletion will do it if you want. Oh, oh, oh. what is that? But where are you taking base class in the pointer? Na? Ah, base class for the pointer only. The when it says pointer, it is a global thing then. In what global? Uh? Pointer is like anyone can access from anywhere. BPTR is a function name there. Pointer name. There. Okay, now. So now see, compilation is successful. Compilation is done and execute. See now, display from the base class. Because I have created a pointer for the base class and I have invoked the display function. Now, what I will do, I'll come here. I will come here. Okay. Just observe here. Now it's important virtual functions I'm going to do. BBDR is the pointer for the base class. Ah, yes. Now what I will do is.
Tell me what I did. I created an object for the derived one class. Now I'll say BPTR to hold the address of OBJD1. Understood that? What 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 our BPTR is holding according to me now? Address of object D1. Address of the derived one class object. Correct? Huh? Now if I say BPTR arrow display, what do you expect now? What do you expect now? Whose who's address your BPT is? Object D1 to display. Display from the derived one class we expect, right? Yes, madam. You see that? You see that? Base class is showing again. Showing you base class again. But it should show you two times. Why only one time it is showing you? Display from the base class. Display from the base class. Say what is that? But it is not saved. I just do that. But what I did here? Derived one. OBJ D1 I create then BPTR is equal to address of OBJ D1 then I say what BPTR arrow display see for this one we expect the output from the base derived display from the base class but for this did one you not created object earlier no created but while saving it did not save only my code did not save only so only I'll save it now properly. Now I'll execute. Twice it should give you the same out. Okay, Return spelling wrong. Hmm. Huh. We are expecting one output from display from the base class. One derived one. Display from the derived one class. But see what is the output you are going to get. Base class, base class. Because base class is dominating now. Madam, but we are holding address object. Ah, we have stored the address of the derived one class to our BPTR, but still it is showing you the output from the base class. The reason is when you do this. Yes, what madam. BPTR, BPTR is of type base. What is the data type of BPTR? BPTR. BPTR is a pointer to the base class. Na? So your compiler will think that okay, I have to execute it from the display from the base class only and it will execute. So now you know what I will do? I will go back. I will go back to the base class. In the base class, you know what I will do? What the keyword? Virtual in front of the display function of the base class. You know, virtual is for the ambiguity. Imaginary. Yes, ambiguity, ambiguity only. Because base class, we created a pointer for the base class and it is taking more priority for the data type of the BPTR, not for the address what it is holding. So, what are we saying this now here is when we say BPTR display here, after. Now, madam, you print. Pointer to display from every class, one for base class. See here, wait, let me explain you. We created a pointer for the base class and allocated the memory. When we say BPTR display, okay, it will display from the base class. Next time, I have created an object for the derived one class and I told the BPTR means base class pointer to hold the address of that class. He is holding that address. But when I say BPTR arrow display, BPTR data type will have the higher priority than the address what BPTR is holding. BPTR belongs to base class. Na? So, display from the base class only will get executed. It is not overwritten with BPTR OBJ D1. No. So, what we do here is we go to the base class display function. We go to the base class display function. Where is it? Display Can function. we use the namespace or scope function over here? No, no. Wait, let me complete it. Then you ask your question. Okay. 
Yes, madam. There is see this. There is a display function. I want to execute this, but it is not allowing me to execute because BPTR uh, data type is having more priority and it is always coming to the base class only. So what I did in the base class display function, I made virtual. Virtual means what imaginary. So now when I say now BPTR is equal to address of D1, I'm doing that here. See. When I'm saying BPTR is equal to address of D1, after doing that, if I say BPTR display, it will go to base class only first. BPTR is BPTR data type is base. That means it will go to the base class. In base class, what happens? Display function has become virtual now. Now it will search for the alternative fun alternative display function. Where is it? Definitely, it will go to that function uh, to. It will go to that particular class whose address it is holding now, and it will execute. It will find the display function there in the derived one class exactly matching one, so it will execute it. Let us execute it. See now, understood. Now, how do I do this one for the second one? I want derived display from the derived two class also. Anyhow, base class from base class, I have made it as virtual. Here, what I should do now? What I should do now here? BPTR equals to address of OBJ D2. What is OBJ D2 according to me now? Derived to OBJ. Object for derived to. Hmm. Now, if I say BPTR arrow display. It will display me. It will go to base class first. In base class, the display function has become virtual, so it will search for the alternative. To which class it will go? To whose address it is holding? Now it is holding the address of B, uh, address of D two class. Huh? So it will go and there it will find a display function. So it will execute it. Madam, if I want to print the address, this base class also. Display both the thing base class as well as derived class. Derived spelling is so uh, different one. Uh, derived spelling. Sorry, sorry. Here, B, B, arrow, display. Okay. Correct. Yes, ma'am. So we'll just see the output now. More all the three display functions should get executed now. Correct. Huh? Because I made the function in the uh, display function in the base class. As what? Display from the base class. Display from the derived one class. Display from the derived two class. What I told you, base class is like your project manager. Now Pavitra has completed her work. I'll take her the object of her class, assign it to the pointer of my base class, and I'll say now display. But if it displays my my in my class, whatever the display function is there, that will dominate and it will execute. So what I will do? My in my base class, the display function make it virtual, so that Pavitra's display function comes to me and execute. Over. Now next one is Travani. Take the object of Tra object of Travani class, assign it to the pointer to the base class. If I display now again, the display function of my base class becomes virtual. Travani display will display. Uh, uh, Travani class display function will execute. So dynamically, I am able to say you display from this class or this class or this class. So dynamic polymorphism by making the uh, by making the function in the base class virtual, we can achieve this. So this is nothing but virtual function. And make sure base class derived classes must have the same function with the same signature here. If they are with different signature, that is function overloading. And if they are same signature, and if you are doing it from the derived class, it is function overriding. If they are having the same function with the same signature, and you are doing it from the base class, then it is virtual function. This topic is called as pointer topic, right? Pointer to class. Pointer to class, just to make you understand what is pointer and all. I have explained you. This is virtual function, dynamic polymorphism. I have explained you. How many of you understood now? Tell me. My work is over now. I have explained you. Now tell me how many of you understood. Madam, actually, truly, it is very much complex. Having one concept, having multiple sub concepts. Hmm. I swear. 
until point that i was able to understand uh, using arrow operator going and printing man actually uh, when we want to when we able to create the object of derived class uh, we can directly display the base class of that derived class and we can see that no why there is again correct having point that is inheritance if and when so only i am taking the example of project manager and an employee if you are an employee then you create an object you access all the inherit everything from the base class access in your class through the object and do the work why we should do here is now you are not an employee you are a project manager if you are a project manager mm -hmm. with employee chamber and you will uh, see what they have done no na they will come to your cabin na Yes, yes, uh, example. I'll give you one example. See, here in ISM only I'll take the example. Okay, now, uh, me being a training manager, there are some four or five faculties are there. You know, every week or every month, they have to send me the report. Every day what they have done, daily report or maybe weekly report, we can say. You know what I have done? The format I had given them. format i had given them everybody will say, fill the same form with their details they'll send me what i will do you know just i'll take that store it in my i have one full all faculties one one sheet there all their data whatever this report they send they'll i'll just add it there same format even i have for that i'll just add it it is as simple as i am bptr and they are like objects their address i'll take And the story in the pointer what I have. So now, if I want to see faculty one's re report, means I'll just go for using the pointer. I'll not, I'll not go to the system to show me your report. And now I'll not say now. Understanding this? You are in the top yes, level now. When you are talking about the virtual function, you are here. You are not here. If that base class and derived class, and you are working under derived class, means you create the object, do that. That is over already. But now you are ulta. You are there. You are at, you are working on the base level. Uh, you are working for the base class. You are not working for the derived class. Somebody may be working for the derived class, but you are here. How do you work? You create a pointer. You not create an object. If you create an object, it is of no use. I told you, ulta of inheritance is not possible. You create a pointer, take the address of that, and do it. And you know, usually, what is the job of project manager? They will uh, they will not do as such any work, right? Their their job is to assign the work. Finally, a consolidated report they have to just submit. Yes or no? So that consolidated yes, report should be in the form of display function. I'm saying. Now, Pavitra. In her derived one class, see for example here, if I go for here derived one class, if I have assigned, assume derived one class is Pavitra, okay? She must have used so many functions here. She must have used so many functions. But compulsory in her class, she should have the matching function for my class. In my class, what I have, the same matching function she should have. Even Shravani must have done it here more than one function. She must have used for given task. She has done so many work here, so many other functions she has used. But now to do the to I will say you use any number of data, you use any number of functions, etc. But compulsory even Shravani should have the same matching function what I have in my base class. It should be same only. See if it is different, it is overloading. If it is same, and if Shravani is doing the work, that is overriding. But now I am doing. I am the base class. I am doing means I should come. Now I want to see Pavitra's result. If I want to see the Pavitra's result, means I have already some fun same function. So it always whenever I want to say display, it will display always this. No, no. I want this display should be displayed here. So I'll make my display function as work. All the base class and derived class must have a function with the same signature, so that when you make it as virtual, the derived class function will replace your function there and execute. 
comes to very simple topic. Please, please take it easily and understand it. Kavani understood? Kavani, you are there? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Sure. Ma'am, can you explain once from starting? Pavitra? Pavitra understood? Suraj? Yes, ma'am. Is it clear? Virtual function concept is clear? Yes, ma'am. Bhanu? Um, Madam, in last case, even after having a virtual base, how was it printing the base class? Output you are asking. See, in the main function, what I am doing first, when I create the base class pointer, I am, I am calling the display function. This is actually optional. Base class display is not required. I just want to show that base class function will dominate everybody, so I just display that. Here I am calling now, first it is base class pointer, then base class pointer is holding the object once, uh, derived one class object, then when I say BPTR of display, we, we are saying that display from this class we are saying, but you are compiled, but you are, but what it will understand here, BPTR is of type base, so it will directly go to base class display function and again it will execute. So when it goes to base class, I'm making it virtual. That means it's not there, you search for same display function in some other class I'm saying. So it will search us in the same class whose object it is holding. It is holding the object one's address, na? So it will go to the derived one class, there it will find a display function, it will execute. Madam, question was how is it printing the base class? when we have given base as a virtual class no see first time it is not holding anybody's address now here see here is it holding anybody's address here no madam only pointer is created ah. so it is going to display first understanding this one then when it is holding the address of actually when it is holding the address of d1 class it should go it should take the display function from the D1 class. Correct? Huh? But it is not going to take, again, it will always, it is display from the base class only because base, uh, BPTR is of type base. BPTR data type is base. So it already knows that there is a display function in my base class, so it will execute always. So what I will do when it is holding the address of them, it is- Madam, you have never not created an object for the base class yet. Huh? No need. We are not supposed to create the object here. We have to create the pointer only. Can I say that pointer is working as an object? No, I'll not say that one. No. Pointer means pointer only. You cannot compare pointer and the object. Same. So pointer, pointer will only have the whole the address of the class now. Address of the object. Hmm. Address class of class. class object. Simple. I'll tell you. We have a hierarchy inheritance in base class and the derived class. We Madam, should... unless no object, no memory allocated, right? Tell me again. No object, no memory. Hmm. No object, no memory. So DME I'm using. New alloc new. I'm using new to allocate memory. And try to understand in dynamic polymorphism, we are we are creating a pointer for the base class base class and the derived class must have one common function with the same signature means same prototype using the using the base class pointer we hold the address of the derived class and we execute the respective function when we are trying to do this job base class matching function will get the priority and we get always output from the base class function which we don't want we want it from the uh, what particular derived class whose uh, whose address of whose it your bptr means a base class pointer is holding so in that case 
we make the base class function virtual so that base b base class pointer will successfully run alternative same matching function in the class whose address it is holding and it is understood shavani now I have repeated full I have repeated now yes ma'am am i not okay it is now yes ma'am selva pavitra bhanu Yes, ma'am. Understood, ma'am. Ma'am, in dynamic polymorphism, the heading of this is what, ma'am? This is dynamic polymorphism only. Virtual in that uh, particular, it needs. In in compile time polymorphism, example is function overloading and dynamic um, operator overloading, like that dynamic. I'll I'll just give you some de details about what is dynamic polymorphism. Dynamic polymorphism can also be called as late binding runtime polymorphism. Also, I'll I'll just open my PPT and I'll read out few points. what is virtual function virtual function is the best example for dynamic polymorphism is it clear to you yes ma'am okay now here i told you people in the base class display function as such we don't need to display anything actually you know here we need not to display anything here so i'll just but you should if you don't want to display anything that means you don't remove display function only you should keep the def you should have the display function because see when when i make it as virtual there must be somebody other function coming and sitting here now for that there must be body empty it should be there where it come and fits here right so if you are having a virtual fun virtual function in the base class if it is having empty body that means it is defined no statements in it now see there is no statement in it correct i'll just remove this okay When I say first time, when I say BPTR arrow display means it will not display anything. It goes empty body comes out. But when it comes to this, uh, when it comes to this line BPTR arrow display, when it is holding the object or header, it will display zero one class, next zero two class. See the output now. Sorry, one extra character something like came I think. So. You know, display from the base class. I removed that now, but I have kept the empty body there. Correct or not? The virtual function with empty body. Correct? Because as such, I don't want I don't want to keep anything inside the uh, what base class virtual function. It will be empty. But if you don't keep this one inside this, it's an error only because matching should be there. Replacement place should be there. Now, such function. base in base class you have a pure you, you have a virtual function with empty body that means no statement in it we call such function as you know what pure virtual function we will not call it as a dummy virtual function do you know this dummy constructor we have dummy functions we have but it is called as pure virtual function what is pure virtual function a virtual function which is defined inside the base class with empty body no statement inside we call such function as pure virtual function we we'll see some ppts now you guys understood this much now what is virtual function pure virtual function is people clear one more thing you observe here am i creating the object for the base class in this program am i creating the object for the base class Am I creating the object or not sir? for the base class? No, ma'am. No. No, madam. See, always whenever you have a class, you first compulsorily should create an object for object. Then only some memory. Then only you can extract all the data. Correct or not? Yes, no? madam. Ah, but now what I did for the base class, I have not created the object only, but I am able to extract everything. Correct or not? What is that magic, madam? How can data get to the blueprint? Ma'am, base 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 hmm. base pointer BPTR equal to new base means uh, new base means new object. No, 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 ma'am. Where is object here? Base class. 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 Where is object here? Base
no means hey this is this is the data type ishwar this is the data type this is the data type hey if you are doing new this is the memory allocated when you write new it is a memory allocation like this now you do int star p equals to new int like this now you write it yes Where is the object? allocating memory have you created a object here no we are not created a object for the base class without creating an object for a class we are madam one minute madam one minute madam anything so here in madam. this example base class is called as abstract class also abstract base class also we say we have simply created a memory for this class hmm. without creating an Using. object if we are able to extract everything from the class such classes we call it as abstract base class both the concept okay, okay. Are, so i understand now and abstract class both i have explained this type of class <coughs> the presence is filled but it is not there huh abstraction was like you can feel the presence but it is not there what is that something is there inside we get output but we don't know how it works Ah, ah, no, that abstraction is different. This is something like that's what without creating a mem, without creating the actual object, we are able to we we are a, we are actually extracting everything. So we call this as a abstract base class. And abstract was definition was like something like operating system having inside the computer which we don't know how it is working, but we are able to get the output. Ah. abstract like, class is the same same thing only na here also without you give us one example on the vehicle what is going inside we don't know we without creating the object i'm able to extract everything from my base class so abstraction it is abstract base class we say okay read few points and if you allocate some data even you can get the data from that ah ab data read it now run time for him as well Read it and yourself understand everything I have explained. My side, I have done everything now. Please read it and understand. But no, offline class also five year months duration. Yeah, but you read this. We talk that later. Understood, everybody. Now the theory part. Read now. I have written the theory part of. I have told you already. Read it now. Understand? Which you have not understood, you tell me. I'll explain. Hmm. Understood virtual function. When we use the same function name in both the base class and the derived class, function in the base class must be declared as virtual using the keyword virtual. When the function is made virtual. C plus plus determines which function we should use it during the runtime based on the type of the object pointed by the base pointer. Means whose address it is holding, that it has to rather than the data type of the pointer. Thus, making base pointer 
to point to different objects, we execute the different versions of the virtual function. This is how I can make it very simple way to make you understand. Hope it is clear to you now. This is what you need to understand, this paragraph. Hmm. Okay, not okay. Ishwar, Savani, Suraj, please answer. Have you understood? Hey, it is it is like this very simple way that the paragraph now you just understand like this. Base start dptr equals to new bit. Correct. Huh? What is the meaning of this line? Everyone understood? We are creating the pointer for the base class. Now, if I say dptr arrow display, definitely it is going to execute what? Display from New the base class. Display base function. class. It will execute the out display from the base class. But I actually don't want this one. Now, I have an object created for the derived one class, obj d1. I have an object. Now, dptr is equal to address of obj d1 obj d1 it means what dptr is for dptr holds the address of address of derived one class object holds the address of object of the Derived one class. Correct. Huh? Understood. Huh? Understanding BPTR is holding the address of the object of the derived one class. So what we expect now, BPTR arrow display means we actually expecting what? It to display the display from the display from derived one class. D1 class, I'll say. But it will not. It will not. Reason, try to understand. Reason is when you do this job, your C gives priority for the data type of BPTR. What is the data type of BPTR? Base. base. So it will go to the base class, and in the base class, there is a display function. It will display up. It will not display from the derived one class. So what we do in the base class display function will make it virtual. So that when I say when after doing this job when I say dptr arrow display. When Madam, but you have the assigned class, address of obj d1 still. When it goes to the when it goes to base class display function in the base class becomes virtual. It means no, it is imaginary. So what your BPTR will do, it will try to search for another display function. Definitely now it will go to that particular class whose address it is holding. So now we can expect this output. Understood this now? When you say BPTR is equal to address of D1 and you are- Madam, it's confusing. When you are assigning him, giving him a proper address, why is, why is going to some other address and coming hey, back to the another address? I'm telling you, you people try to understand now. The priority is going for the data type of BPTR, not what it is holding. The priority is given to the data type of the BPTR. What is the data type of BPTR? Base. Base. So it User will defined. the display from the base class. Are you guys understanding what it is holding? It is secondary for it. Priority is for what? The data type of the base class. Uh, data type of the BPTR. So it will go to the base class and display from the base class. It will execute. No, I don't want that now. So what I will do? Let it go there. I'll make that function as virtual. Imaginary, it is not there. You go and search for another function. I'm saying now. So it will where it will go. Definitely now. If this is not there, the next option is what? 
whose address it is holding. So it will go to the derived one class and there it will find the display function. So it will execute. Understood now everybody? Tavani? Yes ma'am. Pavitra? Everybody? You should just understand this. When you say BPTR is equal to address of OBJ D1. If you say in this case, though it is holding the address of object 1, priority is going for the data type of the BPTR. Not for this. So what we will do? We will go inside that base class only, make that function as virtual. So that priority will come to this. So that it will execute. Okay, that's all I can explain you now. Do people understood this now? Selva understood, he says. Uh, Selva, I have done all the notes of all the points what I'm saying in my PPT. All the points are there here. If you read it, here all the points are there. All the points are made. Please read everybody. I'll be sharing this. Already I've shared this PPT. Read it once again, you will understand. Clear to you guys now this one? Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. Clear, ma'am. Please try. It. It's the only one program on base on this. Uh, what is this we say? Hmm. Dynamic polymorphism virtual function concept. We'll go for one more. Understand what I write now. Constructor. What I did? Construct and destruct. Hmm. A base class. Base class, derived class, constructor, and destructors I have. Default constructor I have. Correct? Huh? Done. Yes, madam. Now you have to tell me the output now. What is the output now? Tell me if I execute. Base class executor. Constructor is not destructor. Suraj, am I creating an object to invoke the destructor? No, madam, nothing done over here. Am I creating an object? It's just a word pointer. Huh. I've created a pointer a point. with no address, no memory I've location. A pointer. Will it invoke the 
know of the constructors or destructors in my class now? Only when we create an object, your constructors and destructors will get invoked. Yes or no? Yes, madam. But you have created a pointer, but it's not pointing anywhere now. A pointer. If I create, will the memory allocated? No, madam. You need to create new memory for that. No memory, no constructor, no destructor. It is. It is like wild pointer. We say, na, like. Yes, madam. Wild pointer. No error, no output, nothing executed because no memory created. We have created just a pointer. Okay, now go allocate yes, the memory. How do you allocate the memory? New base. Hmm. Now tell me what is the output? Error. Error. Why error? Check, madam. No, I will not execute. You tell me first. You guess the output. B A double S E. Ah? Spelling mistake. What oh, spelling mistake is there? <laughs> that you should tell me. Where is the spelling mistake? Done some mistake. Last line. B A double S E. New base. Okay, okay, okay. So now this is supposed to construct and destruct the base class. Yeah, guess the output now, guys. Base class construction and destruction both. Only constructor, no destructor. Tell me why. Why? Compile is doing something wrong. It is supposed to destruct also. Construct. Got invoked they, because because of new memory got constructed. Correct, ah? Huh? While well, deleting memory, destructor will get. Ha! Huh, we should do delete. Then it is not destroying. Destructor will get invoked, na? Because object means automatically object will be destroyed, so destructor will get invoked. I have constructed the memory, but I have not destroyed the memory. How do you destroy the memory yes, now? Yes, madam. Delete. Base star bptr delete. Which two is it now? Got it? Yes, madam. But now it is not. Uh, it is not invoking the, anything from the. Uh, Derived class, correct? Ah, because we have created directly the pointer for the base class, correct? Ah. So when constructor yes, will get invoked for the base class, ah, sorry. Uh, While well, creating class, a memory, we have to create the memory for the derived class. So what I will do is I will directly create the memory for the derived class now. See here. If I create yes, the Class. Anyhow, it is inherited. Definitely, base class also will get the memory. Correct or not? See this now. Save that. Madam, still you are writing base pointer BPT here. Ah, base base. Pointer BPTR only, but alloc allocate the memory for the derived class. Now you see the output. All of you see the output now. Still there is a problem. What is the problem now? Destructor from the derived class not executed. Reason why it has you not destroyed why, that. Why, why constructor from the base derived class invoked <laughs> is after the inheritance, it is like one class. Correct term. Base class also is available in the derived class. So when I create the memory for the derived class, constructor of both the classes automatically will get executed. Now destructor, why it is not executed for the derived class is it thinks that it is only one class and one class, how many destructors can be present? Only one. Only one destructor for one class, right? So we have created a pointer for the base class. So destructor from the base class will get it. Um, Destructor from the base class gets executed. But I want to execute the destructor from the derived class also. So what I will do, go to your program. Delete. Base class destructor virtual. Execute. 
no. Constructors cannot be virtual, whereas destructors can be virtual. If you remember when we have discussed constructor and destructor concept, we have discussed these two topics, these two points. Just write down. I will explain you in the later session in polymorphism. I have told you. Constructors need not be virtual, but destructors have to be made virtual. See in such cases. How many of you understood? How many of you not understood? After the inheritance, if you allocate the memory for the derived class, automatically constructor from the base class and constructor from the derived class will get executed. But destructor, because it thinks that one class can have maximum only one destructor, and we have created the pointer for the base class, destructor from the derived class will get uh, destructor from the base class will get executed. So it will ignore the destructor from the derived class. But no, I want to execute the destructor from the derived class also. There, there also some memory I want to delete it or destroy it. So in such cases, make the destructor in the base class virtual, so that all the destructors first it will anyhow it will destroy the base class destructor. You it will invoke the base class destructor before it before it destroys the base class destructor. We make it virtual first. So that first, let it search for any alternative uh, destructor in the other classes. Definitely, it will go to the derived class, executes or ex uh, invokes the destructor of the derived class first, and then comes back and executes the destructor of the base class also. So this again, I have made some PPT for this. I need to refer it once again. I have some points and share that one. So, what is pure virtual function in abstract class? I have made one PPT. You go through it once again. Pure virtual function is a function declared in a base class that has no definition. Without creating an object of its own, we are extracting everything. So, abstract base class. Have you understood this last program? Constructor and destructor, and destructors can be virtual, but constructors cannot be virtual. Because constructor will be automatically invoked. You need not to make them virtual. But whereas destructors, you need to make them virtual in polymorphism concept, dynamic polymorphism concept. When you are allocating the memory by creating a pointer to the base class, you need to make the base class destructors as virtual. Pavitra, Shravani, Sarva, Ganesh, Manu, Ishwar also. Why today? Is it raining in your place? Anybody? Yes, ma'am. Here, yes, ma rain, somewhat. Going and coming, going and coming. Internet issue, network issue. Yes, ma Net, my network is very slow today, ma'am. So only all of you should come to Bangalore. Bangalore always stable. After 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 we get we get job we will meet you in Bangalore. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Little bit heavy I am feeling for you people to make understand this concept, but it is according to me it is very simple concept. So please go to it, read my notes, everything. I'll share all the notes to you people. Simple simple program, but concept is very important here. So please read and come back. If you have any doubt, we'll have a discussion. Otherwise, polymorphism is completed today. What is next topic? What is our next topic? Ah, all loop concepts completed by today. Exception handling, file handling, such topics are there now. Okay, now templates, file handling, exception handling. Those are our next coming classes topics. Okay, it is. Hmm? Okay, now. Yes, ma'am. How many? How, how many more are there, ma'am? Exception handling. Three topics. Majorly three then... topics are there. Exception handling one day. Templates one day. File handling one day. Three sessions are enough for me, actually. When is the ending okay. date given for TPP? Yeah. 
ninth, tenth, eleventh. Maybe next whole week we have, we'll do some divisions. Okay, now. Yes, ma'am. I need three, I need actually four sessions. Definitely I need four sessions. Three sessions are not enough. Four sessions are enough and one for revision session. Okay. And then one pre recap preparation session also I'll do. Okay, now. Okay. So I'll share all the notes to you people. Already this uh, PPT of polymorphism already have sent you. You people have it, right? Do you guys have that PPT? Hmm? Yes, ma'am. Once again, in that you people read the notes of dynamic polymorphism. And uh, programs I don't have, I did not type also, save also. Hey, have you taken any screenshot or any program? Virtual function. Where is no, it? madam. Are you should take it now. Why you have not taken? I don't, I have not saved also now. I don't have virtual function. I'll press the second view virtual. I'll type, ah, yeah, yeah, I got it. Sorry, I have it. See, I'm sharing it. You people just please uh, go through it and come, okay? Now, some extra functions, simple, simple to make you understand. I have some functions. I've shared it in your WhatsApp group, okay? Their virtual destructor and virtual function, those two are important program. Remaining extra, I've just made it. You just go through it. Okay. I'll end the meeting now. Please take the test and share me the marks. You have not shared, many of you are not shared. Please share the marks also. Few just now have shared. Hmm. Fine. I'll end the meeting. We'll meet tomorrow. Not tomorrow, sorry, Monday. Okay. Okay. Please execute it and come. If you have any doubts or anything to be repeated here in this uh, today's class, I'll explain you once again. But first, you have to make sure you execute and come, okay? Yes, Thank madam. You. Okay.